Good evening, everybody. This is uh, your vi your video business number six, and today we're going to talk about um, marketing surveys. Marketing surveys. Now, we like to talk about stuff that we actually use and actually do. So uh, today is um, all about marketing audits. So I want to go back to when you first met us. You, how did you get here? Um, well, at some stage, how did you get into the Doodle Labs program? You uh, you bought a general image bundle from somebody uh, who was an affiliate, and then you filled in a survey. And we then invited you to a webinar, and on that webinar, we actually presented you with the stuff that you actually asked us during that survey. <clears throat> we asked you what you wanted um, and we all buy what we want period uh, we don't necessarily buy what we need we buy what we want i think we uh, did a video this week where we actually talked about uh, a guy it's a bit sex bit sexist but it was a, a demonstration there's a guy with a, a pocket full of money he wants to spend it on beer uh, his wife wants to her, him to take her out for a nice evening out his bank manager wants him to spend his money on paying off his credit card. And um, we buy <clears throat> what we want. We buy what we want, not necessarily what we need. So the easiest thing to do is, to, is for me to ask you what you want and then to turn around and sell it to you. When we uh, started uh, developing the niche bundles, having launched our first launch, uh, we needed to know which need, uh, niche was in most demand so that we actually catered for the most people with our initial niche, niche launch. We could have guessed it. On the other hand, we could ask, and that's what we did. We use a system called fluidsurveys.com in, and in best BBC tradition, other survey software companies are available fluid surveys uh, dave had a lot of experience with i had never used it before um, it was very flex flexible and very powerful um, i want you to think when i'm going to show you some of the surveys we presented when you look at them look at them from your own perspective what questions do you want answered how would you ask them I will show you some of the questions that we put together, um, but all the time I want you to be think how how does this apply to me? I, I don't at any stage want you to think oh this is not relevant to me. I want you to think about how you can apply this to your own business and get the answers you're looking for. So um, when someone bought a, a product from us uh, on the thank you page, we asked what else do you want? Now. Not, not everybody's going to take you up and fill in a survey without offering some form of ethical bribe. Now, that might be a bonus. It might be uh, a discount, uh, a voucher, something that encourages them to actually take the survey. Here's a survey we ran after selling the, uh, the initial packs of images. Now, the information that we wanted was we have no idea who you are or what you do or what, what your requirements are. So the first question that we needed to ask was, are you a good marketer or not? Are you a beginner, a moderator, a moderate, or, or, or are you experienced? Now, the type of question, with this type of question, you can use something called a radio box. And a radio box, this in this particular case, it's actually a, um, a checkbox. So you could, in theory, click uh, more than one uh, that really should have been what's called a radio box and you can tell a radio box normally because they've got round buttons whereas che check um, square boxes tend to be uh, check boxes and with a check box you can answer m more than one at any one time so here is an example so I asked the first question how good are you at marketing in general and then I wanted to know specifically how good you are at uh, video marketing are you a beginner are you moderate or are you experienced they want to know what software software we're using, so that I can I could then discover which packages I needed to generate projects for. So um, and from there on, 
uh, I wanted then to work out what you intended to use the video for. Uh, was it to sell your own products? Was it to sell affiliate products or affiliate products or services? Or were you creating um, videos for clients? <clears throat> and the three questions I wanted to ask was, uh, are you currently doing it? Uh, would you like to do it? Or are you not interested in, in this at all? From there, I wanted to uh, ask what other ancillary services that you might or, or information you might be looking for. Are you uh, generating marketing plans? Uh, are you looking for technical training? Are you looking to uh, modify the SVGs that we sell you? And then I'm sort of trying to ascertain your level of engagement with that. Are you very interested? Might be useful, no interest whatsoever all the time. I'm building up a profile of you as a group and um, what your back backgrounds are and how I can help. From then on, I want to know whether you whether you can do landing pages, whether you need lead magnets, e email autoresponders, pay-per-click, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all the time you should be looking at these and thinking about, okay, what questions do I want answered uh, if I were to send a survey to my to, to my clients? Then we finish, followed that up with a series of niche questions. You know, uh, we had professional services, which included a whole bunch of internet marketing, real estate. Now, uh, clearly, since we, we launched Doodle Labs with uh, a real estate uh, product, that was the one that was most popular. And I'll demonstrate that from the reports in a minute. So we went through the different niches, care and fitness, um, personal and all the time we're looking for, uh, are you interested in this niche, planning to be in the niche, not in the niche. Uh, if they don't answer, then um, no, no uh, result is, is added to the um, end results. So here's the results. Um, we had 118 people take the survey and 106 people actually completed it. So that's a 90% completion rate. rate. And those 90% 90, 90 actually took 7 minutes and 40 sec 46 seconds to actually fill in the form on average. Now, that's a really long time. When you think about that, if somebody is prepared to spend seven, 7 and 3 quarter minutes filling in a survey, they are really engaged with you. You know, and the whole point about doing a survey is that it gives you an opportunity for you to build up some interaction with with your prof prospects. <laughs> so uh, Paul says, fair to say we were up for it. Yes, I, I think you're right there. Um, <laughs> and uh, Martin said he made a cup of tea halfway through. OK, so um, now th this is an example of the type of results that you will get. It's very, very enlightening. So do you use video in your, in your own marketing? 47% said uh, a lot. 52% um, not a lot. So you can see here how many people actually filled it in. And um, do you create videos for clients? Okay, these are all, these numbers are really fascinating, but not as necessarily enlightening as some of the other reports that you can create on fluid surveys like this graphic. So you can see why uh, we might have chosen real estate as our first niche. It stood out by a mile visually. Uh, colored graphics like this um, allow you to instantly ascertain w which is the best um, best results to follow up on. And um, <clears throat> another another graph here showed that um, most of you were interested or, or actually spend a lot of your time providing marketing services to clients. So guess what we focused on? Providing marketing, marketing services to the real estate industry. OK, so. Um, Another survey that we did was, uh, do you use video in your own marketing? Yes or no. Do you create videos for clients? Yes or no. Then again, in, in this particular service, we, uh, survey, we gave a list of, this was a checkbox again, format is slightly different. So people could, uh, prospects could um, fill in all of the tools they have available. And again, uh, we were looking here to see what, what sort of uh, services they are offering, website, Facebook, remarketing, copywriting, etc. And again, uh, 157 responses, 143 completed. So 91% 90, completion rate. 
but this time it's a much much shorter survey so uh, i if you have little interaction uh, previous interaction with your uh, clients or prospects that you're surveying there's a good idea to keep it fairly short because you want to you you want to actually get the, the answers you want the people to actually get involved and, and get to the end so let's have a look at what questions you might ask yeah and the questions that you ask depends on the answers you want to get and again the answers you want to get depends on what services do you want to offer so um in the in in the question box if you'd like to give me some of the topics that uh, that you are your services that you offer what are things that you want to actually sell and here's a big list uh, i'm guessing that most of you want to sell videos uh, or video marketing what else do you do what what do you follow up with because remember that you know if you sell multiple services the 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 videos selling the videos themselves or giving the videos away is just a lead generation mechanism and the more back-end products that you can get the more money you will make and you don't remember you don't actually have to do this yourself you can find partners to provide these services and just take a, a percentage so dave is actually uh, sells videos and landing pages to generate leads um let's just uh, expand this a second so i can read a little, a little bit easier um gary says videos webinars and landing pages leo's looking to sell online marketing and martin is website and social media content okay so we've got a, a fair old variety there so let, let's start going through some of the questions that you can ask um whatever you do uh, before somebody takes the survey, you really want to pre-frame them so that you, you, you can say things like, uh, I'm going to ask you a, a series of questions. Um, look at each question. Uh, don't feel embarrassed if, if you um, haven't done anything so far. This is just for you to be able to assess yourself at what stage you are and maybe to give you some ideas of, of what you don't have at the moment and uh, we won't judge you uh, we're here to help um, the more the more answers you fill in the better uh, we can we can help you so um i'll so if we start looking at some of the questions one of the good ones to start off with is do you know your marketing numbers do you know the num numbers of your the visitors to your website how long will they stay which page is the most popular so many people don't know their numbers so many people you know i actually have um an analytics app on my mobile phone so if somebody says how many visitors have you got i said hold on a second i press a couple of buttons and i can say 976 to this website so many to another website etc and if you demonstrate this to somebody they go oh wow that's really powerful you know uh, I didn't realize you could get your numbers so quickly and so readily available. Now, if you can offer that, maybe that as a as an opening gambit, you say, you know, do you know how many visitors come to your website? No. Would you like me to help you set that up? If you can give to start off with, I think I think you probably guessed or, or, or by now that we are strong believers in um, in giving in advance. Um, the yes, that uh, that app is a freebie app, and uh, I've got it on an Android phone. If you just look up, Paul, if you just look up in the uh, Play Store analytics, Google Analytics, uh, just download it. And because you're already logged in, most of us are logged in when we use Android to some form of Gmail system, email or something like that. It, it works really, really well. Um, Paul says, uh, yep, got droid. Okay, uh, droid sounds interesting. Okay, so what you're looking to do is to find something that you can do very easily that is of value to your prospect, which will then allow you to offer more things. So your survey might then start to ask questions about the quality of their website. Um, do you have an opt-in? Is it, you know, what do you offer with that opt-in? Um, are you happy? with the the ethical bribe and um 
GeoOffer industry reports. Uh, a really good one is there's a guy called Russell Brunson who says, hi, my name is Russell Brunson. Um, I have what's what's I have the one most important fact of blur when in his particular case it was how to fire a potato gun uh, if you give me your contact details i'll give you the video straight away so the opt-in can be to get more details of another video so um, other questions you can ha ask is do you have videos on your home page do you have um, videos on your facebook page uh, more questions are, do you buy visitors from AdWords from Facebook or YouTube? Again, um, if you don't offer AdWords uh, or pay-per-click advertising, it's a really good idea to find somebody in your location, locality and partner with them. You are generating leads that other people uh, will benefit from. Now, you can either charge for those leads or you can do a sort of reciprocity thing. If you're offering... Uh, free videos um, you can you can do a swap you know you will offer free videos to um, AdWords clients um, or paid uh, in exchange for them swapping leads for you okay more questions um, do you advertise uh, do you advertise again to visitors on your site so you basically um, asking whether people do remarketing now so many people don't do remarketing the chances are if you ask do you do remarketing they'll the answer you'll get is uh what's that then you can go on and simply explain that when a visitor comes to your site and they don't leave an email address you have the opportunity to deliver another advert in adwords from adwords or from facebook facebook is amazingly powerful and if you have the, the capacity to demonstrate this on again on your phone, I, I demonstrate so much on my phone. Maybe do a screen grab. You don't have to actually have the whole thing running. You just have to demonstrate how it will work. Uh, the 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 phone is a really powerful tool to develop concepts. If you actually actually ask somebody to imagine something, then you're you're challenging them if you just hand your phone across and, and get them to visualize it and they go oh yeah i've seen adverts like that oh right i wondered how they did that um often people think they they will be they've been stalked uh simply because a jimmy chu shoe ad is following them around the internet okay so uh another good question is um do you have a telephone number on your on, on your opt-in page? You know, when when somebody opts in, do you just collect names and emails? Now, we said in the past, we like to collect name, email and phone number. Uh, and then you can ask how many if you if you collect emails, how many times do you email them after they opt in five times, 10 times, 20 times? And what do you send them? Do you send people newsletters? Do you send them some useful stuff? All the time, you have to bear in mind that the questions you ask are leading to the answers you're looking for, which leads on to the services that you want to supply. So again, you know, uh, you can ask where do you use videos on the homepage, Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, on your phone. Okay. Um, the one question that we fail to ask, which um, retrospect, I wish we had done, is there a free text block at the end which asks, what do you need most help with? Or are there any questions you'd like? Something where somebody has the ability to do a free form message to you at the end. Uh, that's a, an amazing, powerful uh, facility that we didn't do in our surveys, which we wish we had. So at, uh, in the past, we built a survey that was targeted for uh, small businesses. So this next survey demonstration um, that I'm, I'm going to show you is probably a lot more relevant to most of you. Um, the, the first two surveys I showed you was from our perspective and was more to do with the mechanics of the layout to give you a look and feel of what a survey looked like. This is These questions here will be much more relevant to you and your business. 
So the first, que <coughs> first question we would ask is, um, how effective do you think your website is at delivering inquiries to your business? Now, this is the name of the game. Most people won't know. Most people also will feel that they could do better. A few will be happy. Um, even less will be uh, really ecstatic with, with what they're getting. The second question we would ask is, uh, would you say your website homepage has a compelling headline? Now, welcome is not a compelling headline. Um, so many times I see the word welcome and it drives me nuts because, um, yes, Martin, I will make these slides available under the replay. Um, so you don't need to scribble down these notes. If you, it, The thing to do is to actually listen to what I'm saying and maybe write down adjustments for you know ideas that you have. So focus on the ideas, not necessarily um, the questions, because you'll get those um, in, in the um, PowerPoint. So uh, why do I help, hate the word welcome? Most people come to your website to solve a problem, to scratch an itch. Uh, they don't want to be made well. They shouldn't. You shouldn't be making them welcome. You should be reinforcing the itch that they're trying to get scratched. So I could say welcome or I could say, do you have enough leads for your business or something? You know, does your website suck? Uh, I know a lot of people don't use like headlines like that. It's a bit excessive. But what you're trying to do is to remind them why they came to your website in the first place. That headline is the most important part of your entire page. Go back and look at your own web page. Go back and look at um, real estate headlines. On my, you know, you have you can actually uh, contact people and suggest alternative name headlines for their websites. That would be a really useful introduction. Say, hey, I, I came up with an idea. Not, and I'm not overly impressed with your headline. What about this? It's a way of um, introducing yourself. So the next thing, you, th this is not possibly uh, relevant to you. If you are targeting people that are real estate agents, then this this question really is uh, is not relevant. Um, maybe in, in more so that are you um, a national chain or are you a um, in an independent um, supplier are most of your clients business to business or consumers again if you're targeting uh, real estate agents it could be are you looking to sell your own properties are you looking for commercial properties if you bear with me a second i'm just going to take a drink okay so um another question is do you have analytics on your website this is this is so easy to impress customers just by putting in analytics and showing people how they can get their numbers is a, is a way of building rapport with with prospects. Do you know and so and then well once you've got some analytics on there, how many visitors do you have a month? Um, less than five hundred. If if you get uh, a client that has 500 plus visitors per month in, in the thousands, then it's very, very easy for you to make a significant difference to their business. If they don't have many visitors currently, then you, you actually have two problems. One is you have to generate traffic. And the best way to do that is to simply buy it. Um, if they have a lot of visitors already, you can make a, an impact because now you can focus on conversion. And as I said before, uh, there's no such thing as a traffic problem at the moment. There's only a conversion problem. You can simply buy traffic. It's whether you can buy traffic at a rate that gives you a decent return on investment. Then you can look at which statement most apply to you. I get plenty of visitors to, to my website, but they're not converting. It's back to a conversion conversion problem. I have a good conversion of websites to inquiries, but I just like more people to visit. It's a traffic issue. Here's um, where you actually need to measure how effective their conversion rate is, whether it's uh, cost effective. Again, improve the efficiency of the conversion. 
if you ever do any SEO, do pay, paid traffic first because SEO can take six months, three to six months. Um, you can buy traffic tomorrow and you can start optimizing your site. You can start doing split tests. I will do um, a video on split testing and setting up split tests uh, using uh, Google Website Optimizer and uh, I shall try and get that done in the next week or two. Um, last question is I don't get enough traffic. Uh, and finally, I don't know what I'm doing. And so many people are not sure. Then you can go on to talk about email databases. Do they have a database of previous inquiries? Um, that's one of the ways that you can make a, a massive difference. It's not quite so relevant to people in the real estate business because once you've bought a house, chances are they're not going to come back to you for quite a few years. Um, not quite so for renters. You know, they, they may have a year or two life cycle. Um, buying and selling property i've been in my house now 22 years so i would make a lousy prospect um <coughs> yeah so uh, in in this particular case as applied to real estate although these are great questions to ask small businesses they're not necessarily good questions to ask uh, a real estate agent um so these questions are to do with e bulk emailing and um, and autoresponders. Then we start going into paid advertising, uh, making inquiries as to, to do this. As I say, you don't have to be able to do this yourself, but you can actually generate revenue for yourself by partnering people. I'm starting to repeat myself now. Uh, and this is a biggie retargeting, absolutely huge. Um, it's one of the things that you actually should put on your website, you know, how many of you after last last uh, week's um, webinar actually went and put your retargeting code on your own website? How many of you already had it? If you want to answer in, uh, Diane said I did. Well done, Diane. Is it Diane or Diana? Sorry, let's go quick. Uh, Diane, yeah. Um, Paul had it running before. Dave Pipson said that he still needs to watch the webinar from last week. I urge you to go and go onto YouTube or we'll watch last week's webinar um, and put um, put the remarketing code on your website because you will be compiling an audience from the day you put it on. Every day you miss, every day you delay are more more prospects that get away. Uh, Diane said she had two more inquiries as, as a consequence. Well done. Um, you found it a little bit um, tricky to start off with the concept, but um, hopefully, um, well, clearly you uh, persevered and um, well done. OK, so um, let's go back. Incentives. Um, what are you going to do for an incentive? Now, it could be a free consultation. It could be uh, an, uh, a newsletter. None of those are really inspiring. What really works is having the capacity for a real estate client. Remember, you, you're not actually doing this for to attract the real estate agent at the moment. You're doing this to attract the real estate client, the, the actual vendor, the person selling the property. One of the biggest issues they have is a desire to um, get a valuation. Um, now, it could be that because getting a real-time evaluation, uh, valuation uh, is it requires some investment. Um, not sure that you can actually do it. Whether techni technically you can do it, what you can do is from the opt-in have a templated email that you can quickly send with your estimate of the value of a property in that area. So if you have an address, postcode, you could look them up. If you've got a system that does um, approximate um, costs, or well, they have a, 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 a approximate, oh, Zillow, Dave's saying Zillow. You go to Zillow, find a price, send them an estimate. You've opened a communication. 
Uh, it's a very simple thing to do. We use templated emails all the time. Whatever email system you're doing using, whether it's Gmail, whether it's uh, an autoresponder system, uh, get response is really, really good. What you can do is create a set of standard emails that you can bring in as a template and quickly, quickly tweak. Um, I would use um, plain text, Dave. Um, although it's actually an HTML email, but I don't include anything other than uh, a centered text box. Uh, I might use images. Um, I, I tend to, you've probably seen a few of them. I tend to send out an email with one of our images in uh, just for fun. So if I want, if I'm talking about a particular emotion, I'll try and find an image and drop that in just to reinforce the emotion I'm trying to portray. Uh, I would I would avoid uh, a corporate look and feel uh, when somebody receives an email and it's got a banner along the top and it's different colors than the sides and it's formatted you might think it looks really great sadly your prospect thinks oh it's a corporate sales email uh, whenever you send an email to friends and family what do you do you just start typing away you don't have a, a banner along the top or anything like that you might you might have an image at the bottom you might have i we actually include a video at the bottom um in the, one of the reasons why we do that is that if you put a youtube link uh, at the bottom underneath your signature signature what gmail does is that actually creates a thumbnail of that video uh, which looks quite compelling you know it's like an attachment so if you've ever received an email from me personally <clears throat> at the bottom you'll see uh, a doodle ads video thumbnail um, again you know people use the footers on emails incorrectly they include things like the you know the legal you know, the, please don't read this. If you if you're not the intended recipient, delete it. Blah blah blah. None of it stands up in court. Uh, it's a complete waste of space, and that is prime real estate for you to make a free offer. You know, um, there are certain legal requirements that you have um, to comply with the uh, can spam laws. You have to include your uh, company name or your trading name. You have to include your address. You don't have to include your phone number. I always include my phone number. I want people to phone me. I have a call answering service that will take my calls. You have to have uh, the uh, status. So um, Doodle Ads is a limited company. If you were a sole trader, you put sole trader. You have to say what jurisdiction that that entity is registered with so it would be uh, doodle ads limited uh, limited company registered in the united kingdom with registration number and the address that's it that's all the legal stuff that you need if you do that then you are compliant um, if it's an email that you generated that you that you've done from for, it's not a broadcast email. You don't have to use an unscripted subscribe. So if you're talking to a client, as as clients, I could send you an email. I don't have to include an unsubscribe link because I'm not broadcasting. You're not being bulked email. Um, <clears throat> so yes. So if anybody's got any questions on email or anything like that, far away there. Um, but uh, so. Uh, Let's get on. So do you have any, any someone in the business who can create copy for you? I don't know whether any of you are offering offering copying copy services. But again, like AdWords, I would find people to um, to actually deliver uh, copy that you can get a commission on. Right, Dave says, do you track clicks on emails? Uh, I do on broadcast. So uh, one of the, we use JVZoo quite a lot. 
and um, JVZoo has a connection through to GetResponse. We use GetResponse, and GetResponse will track uh, opens, it will track um, clicks, uh, all sorts of things like that. Um, yes, yeah, so for broadcasting, we certainly uh, track clicks, and uh, yeah, it's it's very very enlightening. You know, very often if we send out uh, to on the on, on the last broadcast uh, that we did for the recent uh, niche launch, our emails were open somewhere between 40 and 60 percent, uh, which is incredibly high. Uh, and on average, we had uh, in, in excess of 50 percent click through. So, you know, really, really good numbers. That's all to do with your relationship with your list. It's not the size of your list that's important. It's how well you get on with your list you know don't send them stuff that that that, that, that they don't want um don't just send sales emails actually that's not true be consistent armand morin uh, has made hundreds of millions of uh, dollars online for himself and for his clients he only sells sales emails and when i get an email from him i know he's selling something i still open it because i'd like to see what he's selling me um, but if you do content uh, and you then start selling big time, people will be unhappy and they will unscribe, unsubscribe. So whatever you do, whatever you decide you're going to do, whatever mix you're going to do, and very often people will say, you know, four content emails, one sales email. Well, OK, if that's what you do, be consistent with that. It's all to do with consistency. It's so that when your uh, clients open and uh, clients and prospects open their emails, they get what they're expecting. That's the name of the game. Then at the end of the survey here, uh, we have name and email address. Now, normally we would have phone number as well because we like to uh, call people immediately after they, they've uh, filled in the forms or, or they've opted in. OK, so today was a, a, a relatively uh, short uh, webinar. Um, I'm open to questions now. Um, I can thoroughly recommend that uh, you re look at uh, fluid surveys or a, a another uh, survey application. I think Survey Monkey is another one. Um, they vary in price. Sending send surveys to your to, to your clients. Ask them what you know. Let's start building up those questions. What what questions do you want? What are you trying to um, to to sell? Ask them questions that lead to the answers that you're looking for. That are, that opens the door for you to sell those services. So, um, has anybody got any questions on where what, what we've discussed so far? Um, if you'd like to tell me what you're trying to sell and what sort of questions you think um, might be might be relevant, then uh, I'll open up the um, the audio and and let's have a quick chat. As I'm on my Todd here today. Um, okay, Dave um, has asked, do we use the real estate landing templates from leadpages.net? Um, uh, we have stopped using lead pages um, so much. We tend to use uh, Optimize Press 2, which we find a lot more flexible. I've also been using videopages.co, I think it is, .co for clients. A few of my clients have bought videopages.co or it could be videopages.io. Um, the advantage of, of video pages is that currently it's on sale for a one-off fee, whereas uh, lead pages are uh, is a, a monthly program. Um, also, uh, I find lead pages too um, restrictive. You know, I, I sometimes want to make changes, and um, you'll find that you can't actually make uh, changes. So uh, Dave's asked, how is video pages working for me? Uh, really well so far. Uh, there, there were some issues initially, uh, but they seem to be fixed. That you know there are some restrictions, but the the flexibility is is much greater than it is with lead pages. And so far, the the client that I'm working with um, is very happy 
uh, he can make the changes himself. It's, it's like he's got his own portable. You don't actually need to use them for, for video. Um, although it's called video pages, uh, you can just use them as a generic landing page. Um, it's one that I will actually review in a, a, a separate uh, a separate video. So I'll give a demonstration of how video pages work. In fact, we might do a webinar on video pages. That might be a, a good idea. Um, Gary says, I find ranking questions to be quite useful. I think these are called Likert scales or something like that. I'm not come across that, Gary. Um, please rank these five items in importance to your business. Oh, I see. Yeah, these can lead to uh, good conversations with potential clients. Yeah, that's a, an interesting concept. Um, okay, so um, Diane says, uh, would it be good to send out short surveys to people who opted into my page, exactly what they want in marketing? Um, well, that's what we did with you guys. You know, we, we sent out, you bought something. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be uh, to, to have bought something. It could have been that you opted in. Um, and then we sent you out a short survey and then follow up with a longer survey if they're responsive. Um, so, yes, um, do it. You know, um, I believe I'm not sure whether um, Fluid Surveys has a, a trial volume. Um, uh, let's have a quick look. Let's fire, fire up the fluid surveys and see. Uh, a quick look at fluid surveys pricing. Okay, so the pricing is. So you can have, I'm not sure we don't, I'm sure we don't spend $70 a month. Maybe we do. Okay. Hmm. Oh, Fluid Surveys has now been bought by SurveyMonkey. There you go. Limited choice. Okay, do, would anybody like um, to raise their hand uh, let's, and have a chat, ask some questions? If you, if you would, raise your hand and I'll try and <coughs> um, enable the audio. Dave says um, Survey Monkey works really well. Um, Jim is still absorbing. Okay, well, Jim, let, let's. Uh, are you prepared to talk online and let's um, answer a few of your questions whilst you're thinking? Nobody brave enough to talk. <laughs> Diane's um, going to use SurveyMonkey. I just suggest you try it. You know, create a, a survey, send it out to existing clients. Um, that's that's a great thing to to follow up with. You know, what it, it's an opportunity for you to re-engage re with existing clients and uh, ask them, you know, what are the services you you can um, offer them. SurveyMonkey, Gary says, has a free um, option for a limited number of questions, I believe, 10 questions up to 100 responses. OK, well, again, that allows you to test it. Um, we would exceed A, the number of questions, and B, certainly the number of responses. Um, uh, Dave says, there's a WordPress plugin released recently through JVZoo that allows you to set up interactive surveys and send people to specific auto responder lists okay just out of uh, interest how many people here are actually using wordpress is is wordpress something that's uh, popular here um if so how many people are using optimized press uh, so dave is wordpress only what what are other people using what are you using to generate your landing pages diane says she's using <coughs> wordpress 
one of the interesting things about video pages is that uh, you can generate uh, landing pages for your clients uh, that you know they they have a link and uh, the embed code is very very simple to give to your clients um, and rent them landing pages um, it, they don't actually have to have their own domains or anything like that uh, it's very very easy to do easy to use um, so I, I would thoroughly recommend looking at that if you want to generate landing pages for your clients and I could imagine uh, um, that it can be quite lucrative and that you can charge um, a revenue stream you know you can charge ten dollars a month to rent a landing page charge ten twenty dollars a month with a video and a landing page um, do Diane says do you think people are afraid to commit right away to marketing people they need more proof first I found once that uh, once I start talking and ask them questions what they want they get more interested that is absolutely the case one of the things I want to, that I will be discussing next week in in the um, asking for the sell webinar is that the more you can get your prospects talking about themselves by asking questions, the more trust you develop. Because people walk away from that conversation thinking, wow, that was a really interesting conversation because all they've heard is themselves talking. The more you can keep your prospect talking by asking questions, the more trust you establish, the more they like you because they've been hearing their own voice. Martin says, you've just given me an idea for another service with landing pages. Great. Do you want to tell us about it then, Martin? Um, yes. So uh, I can remember listening to a guy called Jay Abraham, who's one of my, uh, I, I love marketing content from Jay Abraham. If you want to listen to busloads and busloads of marketing stuff and, and, the, and the best possible content, uh, start listening to Jay Abraham online. Uh, one of the things he said was he met a, a person whilst he was at a conference in the middle of the night because he was jet lagged. He went down and he was genuinely interested. And all he did was ask question after question after question. Um, I'll, I shall type, um, so Diane, I'll, I'll type Jay Abraham in, in the box here. So hold on, I'll send it through to everybody. It's Jay Abraham. I sent all. Okay. Um, now, he just sat with this guy for an hour and a half and asked him question after question after question. And then he felt tired, so he decided, right, it's time to go to bed. And um, when he left, the, the, the guy he was talking to turned around to him and said, Mr. Abraham, you are genuinely one of the most interesting people I have ever met in my life. And he hadn't said a thing. All he'd done was ask questions. And that guy left with the impression that um, that he'd had a conversation and he would spent all the time talking. That's why he had that impression. And Dave said, yes, there's um, something called 50 Shades of J right now. And every week or so he sends out some more uh, marketing material. Um, so I've, I've gone to find 50 Shades of J. Uh, let's see. 50 Shades of J. Great audios. Okay, so if you just type in Fifty Shades of J, um, you'll go to Abraham uh, Abraham.com, and there's a whole bunch of free resources there. Um, you know, really, really good stuff. I can't recommend J Abraham highly enough. Uh, Jim says, I'm finding my business network meetings I am attending. Not many are really working on uh, an online presence. They're relying on print ads and other traditional methods. Some like look like deer caught in headlights. It's funny because they are, uh, they are there to try to get leads from others. So I'm having to educate a whole lot. Okay, Jim, do you have one of your videos on your phone? Okay, what you can do is also get a set of cans. Uh, which are, you know, people will put a set of cans on. They probably won't put um, some buds into their ears. So if you wander around at a network meeting and somebody says, what do you do? And you show them the video. Um, Jim says he carries a tablet much better than a phone. OK, that's good. Um, I also carry a um, 
a, a, a small Bluetooth set of speakers because phones and tablets uh, are not um, powerful enough to actually present the audio in um, an, a network environment. The background noise is too too high. Um, so I have a set, put a set, carry a set of cans that they can put on their head, or uh, I carry a Bluetooth um, uh, speakers. And you you do need the um, you do need the uh, audio. Um, it, it's nowhere near as powerful without it. Yep. So Jim says yes, he has a Bluetooth speaker. Well done, Jim. Um, Dan Kennedy, uh, Dave says that Dan Kennedy suggests that people use direct mail to drive traffic to a website. Good for real to direct mail to send a landing page with a video like absolutely, absolutely. So you can if if these are these people are um, in in a headlight, you know what you can do is you can say, hey, I can put a video on here, I can give you an opt-in, I can give you a landing page, and I'll do it for twenty quid a month. You know, it can cancel at any time. Instead of you being charged three five hundred pounds for something that doesn't work, just have this for twenty quid a month. Get yourself uh, a revenue stream. You know, there's no risk. I'll give it to you free for a month, um, and then if you need, um, then if you need uh, for me to help you, if you need help with generating traffic, I can do that for you as well. But um, <laughs> thirty dollars a month, Dave. Sorry, twenty quid, thirty dollars. Uh, something that's um, you know not too expensive it allows them to actually test it and try it. Okay, so um, go try video pages. I'll do a video on it. Uh, sell, sell um, landing pages, rent landing pages. You can you can you can sell a landing page for ninety ninety seven dollars, including a video. Uh, get a template, you know, so that you can uh, just instantly set it up, tweak it, and away you go. Um, but surveys, coming back to surveys, when you start getting customers, start surveying them, find out what else they want, and help them solve their problems. And one of the best ways to help them solve the problems is by asking them a series of questions. Okay, so does anybody else have any questions? Nobody's willing to actually turn a microphone on and say hello. So uh, Andrew was called out of the office. Can I start again? Okay, it'll be there tomorrow morning, Andrew. Well, you can actually uh, turn turn on your, your microphone and ask questions if you like, and everybody else will tell you. Uh, Diane asks, uh, when is the next webinar? Uh, probably next Tuesday. Uh, I have to confirm with Dave that he's back. Um, Martin says, I have too much going on here. OK, well, it will be available again tomorrow, uh, Martin. Oh, in terms of noise and background. Yes, thank you for that. You saved us. Um, there's probably a lot of uh, children running around if you're in the UK or maybe people in the office. Um, yeah, well, um, let's um, get this conversation going in the Facebook group. Uh, let's start uh, putting some questions. Um, put the questions up and let's uh, we'll give you some feedback. Um, yes, Andrew, the replay will I'll, I'll um, might I'll do my best to get the replay up tonight. I'm out tomorrow. I'm playing golf all day tomorrow in the rain, as I previously said. Um, so I'll do my best to get the replay up tonight. So it will be available for you in the morning. I'll also get the slides up so that you can uh, go through. The questions that we ask, pick the ones that are relevant to you. Uh, Andrew says, thank you very much for the niche pack. So good. I'm glad you liked them. Uh, I thought there were some absolutely amazing drawings in them. Um, the, because I mostly do copy and talking to customers, I rarely get to see the finished videos. And when I do, and when I see the videos that you guys produce, I just look and I go, wow, this is fantastic. I, I just love them. Um, yes, we have. Um, uh, some Dave, yes, we're going to have uh, more densest image packs. Dave and I are sitting down to talk next week. I think that there is an increasing demand for just a steady stream of new images. Uh, and so we'll be putting together bundles of new images that are just released on a fortnightly or monthly basis. Um, so I look forward, I genuinely look forward to all the things that you post. I love the videos that you're creating. I love your um, inspiration, uh, the, the ideas that you have. You know, the, uh, I really enjoyed, um, uh, just, just to say, um, 
I don't know whether you've all joined the Doodle Ads website. The, the Labs obviously is our private conversation place uh, where you will get better deals than than, than everybody else. Um, but come and come and join the Doodle Ads um, the Doodle Ads uh, Facebook group as well because there are over 350 people in that one as well. So um, you know, come and come and have a conversation there as well. Uh, I just Facebook seems to take so much of my time these days um, and uh, I need to restrict my time anyway has anybody got any last questions on uh, has anybody got any last questions on um, surveys if not put your surveys questions up in Facebook and let's uh, let's have a conversation so as Diane says see you in Facebook looking forward to it good night